and welcome to Campus to Community, the Columbia Basin College News Magazine. I'm your host, Don Alford, CBC's Assistant Director for College Relations. Are you contemplating going to college? Fall quarter is a great time to start. Whether a first-time college student or looking to return to school, you'll want to pay close attention to our guest, Kelsey Myers, to learn how to successfully enroll for the fall. We'll also talk with engineering technology student, Umberto Garcia. His journey from being a non-English speaker to upcoming college graduate will inspire and motivate anyone doubting their capabilities. But first, joining us now is the Vice President for Diversity and Outreach, Martin Valadez. So welcome. Thank you for having me. So I understand congratulations are in order. CBC was recently notified of having their Hispanic Serving Institution designation renewed. So tell us, what constitutes being an HSI and why is this important to the college? Hispanic, uh, the Hispanic Serving Institution designation uh, is given to colleges and universities that have at least 25% of their students um, Hispanic origin. Um, and it's uh, extremely important for us because it will allow us to apply to a number of uh, grants, federal grants from different departments that we otherwise would not be able to apply for. So it really just um, allows us to, um, to increase, to broaden the types of uh, resources that, that we'll have to serve not just Latino students, but the entire community. Great. So CBC is taking the lead as an HSI, having had this designation since 2004. What are some of the grants that we've had over the past years? So we've had grants from different departments. Um, uh, currently we have a grant from the Housing and Urban Development Department, the Office of University Programs, and actually this is a, our third grant. With that one we're working with Downtown Pasco on their Facade Improvement Program. We also have had uh, two Title V grants from the Department of Education. Um, the last one, for example, helped us um, to um, uh, use technology to improve our su success rates in math and science programs. Um, and we've also had um, sort of a number of others. So it's really, um, there's a number of different grants that we can use to develop uh, the institution. Okay. Unfortunately, there are some misconceptions about becoming an HSI. Um, that being a Hispanic serving institution, they only serve Hispanic uh, right. students. How does actually having this designation help all students? Well, what the, uh, it's important to note that um, the designation, the only thing that it does is, is allows you to, um, to apply for grants that are set aside for Hispanic serving institutions only. So it's, it's very similar to the designation for tribal colleges and universities and also for uh, historically black colleges. And those grants, allow the, um, uh, the money that's received from those grants are to serve the entire population. So there's the grants that we receive, for example, from uh, Title V were used to improve the success rates, not just of Latino students, but of any students taking those particular math or science programs. So yeah, so I want to just make sure that uh, everybody knows that um, having the designation is something that's important and that helps the entire college because uh, it just, um, broadens the pool of resources that we have access to. Great, and that helps the whole institution, especially in this time of budget cuts. And yes, yeah. and a lot of them are, are important because they're also, um, there's institutional um, strengthening uh, grants. So it, it's really uh, extremely important for, for the college, for our students, and even for the community. As I said before, our HUD grant, in fact, uh, works with downtown businesses. So it's really, uh, it's not just internally that it helps, but it helps externally as well, or they can. Okay. And what grant opportunities are currently under consideration? So we're currently looking at a number of different grants. Um, another Title V, that is another um, Department of Education grant. The Department of Education also has specific, uh, uh, started a new competition specifically for STEM-related fields, that is mm -hmm. science, to technology, engineering, and math, and we're also looking to apply for that, and that's a different one. It's also a Title V, but just for that, there's also a number of opportunities um, and grants available through the Department of Agriculture that are also set aside mm -hmm. just for Hispanic institutions to compete for. Um, and in fact, and they're also in the process right now of trying to open up, this isn't available yet, but in the future, there could be also opportunities within the National Science Foundation. So there's really right. a lot of, um, lot of work there. Okay. So for more information on CBC's grants, call Martin Valadez 
or visit the diversity webpage at columbiabasin.edu diversity. We'll be right back. One vital difference between wanting a degree and obtaining one is making that first step to enroll in college. Kelsey Myers is here to explain the process to becoming a CBC student. Well, welcome, Kelsey. Thank you. So as a new student, what are the steps to enroll for fall quarter? Well, the first thing a student will want to do is submit, uh, complete and submit an application and pay the $28.30 application processing fee. Students can uh, get those applications by downloading them from the website or by coming into the admissions office, which is located in the H building on the Pasco campus. Oh. Students will then want to um, take the compass assessment, which is going to place them in English reading and math classes. Once they've completed that step, they'll be able to take an online orientation that's going to teach them how to register for classes and learn more about the advising process. After that, they'll know how to register for their classes and they'll be able to go on and go online, excuse me, and register for those classes. Okay. Now the steps vary a bit for um, returning students and transfer students. What are those steps? Right, so transfer students actually, um, if they've never been to Columbia Basin College before, they'll uh, apply just like a new student does, but there are some other steps that they'll want to follow. And if they visit columbiabasin.edu forward slash admissions, they can get the remaining steps for that. Returning students though, if they have been uh, out of Columbia Basin College for over a year or more than four quarters, uh, they'll want to submit a new application. However, if it's been less than a year, uh, then they can actually just reactivate their application by um, calling or visiting the admissions um, department. Okay, and I understand we have a fall application deadline. Why is it important to apply before this, on this date? Yeah, so the fall uh, quarter application deadline is Thursday, August 9th. And it's important that students uh, apply by that date so that um, they can ensure that they're going to get the class, uh, classes that they're interested in taking or wanting to take, as well as the class availability, the times of those classes. Mm -hmm. They'll be uh, more likely to get those times that fit into their schedule. Okay. So when can new students um, begin to register for fall quarter? New students can start registering on June 4th. Okay. And if you had one thing to share <laughs> with new students that are um, trying to go through the process, what would it be? It'd be to pay attention to deadlines. Uh, at CBC, you know, with the pro application process, there are some other deadlines, especially if you're applying for things like financial aid. There's always a tuition deadline. So if you're paying attention to those deadlines and, and being on top of them, um, you know, then you'll be successful. It'll help you to be successful at Columbia Basin College. Well, thank you so much, Kelsey. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Don't delay any longer. Take the first step to becoming a college student. If you need further motivating, wait until you meet our next guest. Having to learn English, obtain his GED, all while supporting his family, didn't stop student Umberto Garcia from earning his AAS degree in engineering technology. You won't want to miss his story.
At 19 years old, Umberto came to the United States from Mexico speaking no English and without a high school diploma. Through perseverance and with the help of CBC, Umberto will be graduating in June with a college degree. Umberto, hi. so hi, how are you doing? Good. Thank so you. how have you uh, managed <clears throat> to come so far? Well, there is many reasons. Well, the first reason is uh, my family, so my wife and my kids, they support me uh, to be in school. So the other reason is uh, uh, CBC, which offers a lot of opportunities. So I can say that it applies to me because I started uh, taking ESL classes and then I got my GD through uh, HEP, which is a program uh, sponsored by CBC. And um, thanks to, to the teachers, uh, who are really, really good teachers at uh, CBC, especially in the ENT program, so. Great, and so now you're in the engineering and technology program. How has this program began to open doors for you? Well, um, I'll be graduating this June with my AAS as an engineering technician, and also I'll be uh, graduating with my one year certificate that's computer aided drafting, which is CAD, so. Um, also, I applied for, for an internship and I just uh, have been notified that I was selected for this uh, internship that it's uh, called CCI. It's uh, sponsored by PNNL. So it's, uh, it's going to be a really good opportunity to apply what I have learned on uh, what I have learned from the program and at the same time uh, learning new skills while working with uh, this group of engineers. So Great, so yeah. what a great step right into P and L. You know. Yeah. All right. So how did you choose the engineering and technology program or did it choose you? Well, I choose this program because, uh, you know, I like mathematics, uh, science, physics. So when I read uh, about this program, um, I definitely uh, say to myself, oh, this is the problem where I want to be in because, you know, in this program, uh, we solve a lot of problems. Can be land surveying, can be strength of materials. And so by using the math or physics, we solve problems, which it's what I like. So. Thank you so much, Humberto. This concludes this month's Campus to Community. If you would like more information on the topics covered today, contact information will be made available at the end of our program. For general information about CBC, call 547-0511 or visit us on the web at columbiabasin.edu. I'm Don Alford. Thank you for watching. <laughs>